All right, guys, welcome back to the Regal Gentleman YouTube channel, the Regal Gentleman Studio. Today we've got Steph in the chair. How are you, mate? Not too bad. You no, good? Not too bad. Good, good, mate. So, what can I do for you today? I've had long hair the last like six years. Wow. So, this is all very new again. Okay. Hair. And I had it kind of cut for like seven weeks of growth. Okay. For me, it's just kind of, I wanted like to have like a base. Okay. So that I could kind of do whatever I wanted. It's all kind of the same. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. But my main thing is just like, it's just very thick. Yeah, it and looks I just it. I kind of want it to be a bit thinner. I had, a, I said like a reference that was like Brad Pitt in like Fight Club. That's okay. kind of like spiky, kind of messy. Because I was kind of starting that myself. That kind of thing. Kind of spiky. Yeah. Uh, a That's bit a good messy. Go on for the side. Yeah, yeah. So again, this is very sort of early 2000 styles, right? These, these things that I grew up on, right? I started yeah. off in the, in the industry around that time. So it's that kind of, no, there's no lines. It's all just cut to the ear. Mm -hmm. Everything's very natural around the ear. My only concern is, I don't think it looks long enough. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I really don't. I think we could make it look similar. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I think we'd have to leave a lot of the length on the top. I think the problem is as well, because it is so short, thinning it out will make it feel shorter. Because okay. essentially when you thin hair out, you remove length. Right. Within it, certain, exactly. within the areas of the hair, okay? I mean, if I'm honest, I, I'd be happy if we, if we did like a three, on the side, right, and like maybe like um, a taper, okay, kind of fade there or something, and then like just try to kind of make it just look a bit less. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Like I said, like, I'm, I'm more just the top, in a sense, being yeah, quite messy. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite like um, flexible with because I almost feel like this is sort of why I look a bit like. Like I was joking on the email saying I look like a muffin top. A bit like, <laughs> like when I come out of the shower or something. Yeah, yeah. But no, I can tell you why that is because it's been cutting around the shape. You've got no cut. You, the corners have been cut off. Mm. It's that's not not against the, the the other hairdressers. What it is is that when you look at the shape growing out, mm. you can see essentially how it's been cut. Is I think he's cut it to a very messy texture all over. I think he's gone for that more one length. But the problem with that is that when you do get a, a, cut, a length cut in that is very similar all over, it's almost like you've had a shaved hair and it's grown out the same length. That, right. that is generally what happens. That's why I generally cut a tiny bit short on the sides. Oh, even, even if I'm doing a clipper cut, I tend to go that, maybe even just a half grade short on the sides. Oh, right. Mostly it fits everyone's sh face shape. It almost leans everyone's face shape out, but also it grows out still quite square. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah, please. I do feel like it'd be a waste just doing a number three. I mean, look, I'm happy to do what you want, but I'm just giving you just no, purely no. a suggestion from my point, right? Because you've got Fight Club in my head now, right? And I'm just like, what a waste it would be to, to lob a number three on it. I'd, I'd definitely suggest getting the, getting the back and sides tapered, just with the top not being as long, you know? I think the back and sides being tapered in. Yeah, I saw that reference, I thought maybe I'm just like a few inches. Um, yeah, I think maybe, yeah, maybe a bit, yeah. Which is fine. But what you could do is, I was thinking if we cut it through our fingers, as short as we can go through our fingers, what that would allow us to do is to still have some texture on the sides though a little bit. And then we could just freehand clip at the edges. So more than just putting a number three on and hoping for the best and cutting the top in. Sure, sure. It's a lovely haircut, but I just think it would be a pure waste for what we could do. And, and especially if you want to have a very textured haircut, I think when you do a three on the back and sides and you do blend in clipper over comb, you do end up having a very, if you, you can point cut in to break the blend up, mm. but I think I could do it a bit, a bit more of a, a better, more textured way to, yeah. to bring it into the top. Because I think you're going to have to leave a lot of the length on the top to be fair. If you want to have that kind of mess, you can just about stays up at the front. Yeah, you see? Yeah, yeah. I'm up All right, cool. That's good, mate. Well, let's get you gowned up and get you started. All right, mate. So, guys, I'm going to start by putting a horseshoe section in Steph's here. I'm going to try and give him something that is going to use the elements of um, Brad Pitt's here in Fight Club, which, and, and Steph's just said to me then, he's, he doesn't. What, 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 what were your exact words? You know, you don't, you're not very good at using a reference or your photo reference because you think it's going to get cut exactly like that, right? Not even that. It's just. Um... I was saying that obviously people's hair is different, textures are different, so you're not gonna exactly sometimes get yeah. that thing. And 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 I'm at a stage where I'm like I don't I don't need to have exactly I'm not gonna be disappointed if it's not, you know, it's yeah, yeah. just like Exactly. Well well that's what I was trying to say as well, was that you know, I was saying to Steph is that sometimes a picture doesn't always have to be the exact haircut that they come out with, right? And what I mean by that is you might get a guy, I'm sure there's, there's barbers and hairdressers watching this now, who've, who've, who've had a guy show him a picture of, say, Bradley Cooper, and that guy's hair is being Bradley Cooper's hair, just on a different man. So you've been very lucky to create that exact same style. But the reality is, it's not going to happen, right? You know, most guys don't have the same hair texture. And I've even got twins here, and they don't have the same 
the hair texture. If someone's got a slight knife well compared to the other twin, you know, so it's not always going to be identical. But what I said to Steph was that what I'm getting from the Fight Club style, right, it was not exactly that style. At first, I went all out and I was like, yeah, great, a little bit messy around the ears. This is my kind of thing, right? But then when Steph mentioned number three, I was thinking, okay, it's not necessarily the haircut that he wants, but it's the elements of the haircut that he wants. So it's the messy texture. So when you do your consultation and you get to that point of like, it's not necessarily the same haircut he wants. There's just a certain bit of that haircut that he likes, which was that kind of really messy texture. So we can create that same texture. It doesn't have to be the Fight Club haircut, but it can be that ke the texture that is created in Brad Pitt here. So that is what I think photographs are always good. And that's what I was trying to say to Steph was that even if you show a photograph, it's just working with your barber or your hairdresser to find out exactly what it is about the haircut that you like, you know? It can take 30 seconds, it can take five minutes, it can take 20 minutes, it depends how long you've got. Um, but the reality is, as long as you get out of what you want from that picture, it doesn't have to be the same haircut. Um, it makes life a little bit easier for both of us, because I know exactly where we're going now, and we're both on the same page. You've given me a little bit of free reign, which is always, always nice. I'm very fortunate that, we get, that I get that nowadays, but at the same time, it's still gotta look good, it's still gotta work. And it's got to work for you as well. You know, this is this haircut isn't just for a video. This is you're going to wear this for the next however long it'll be before you get your next haircut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't want you to. It don't. I don't want you to just be like, oh, it's a nice haircut for camera, and then you know, yeah, yeah. a week down the line, you're like, oh, damn, I can't style this. You know, because because at the end of the day, it's not what it's for. This is not. A, this is what our videos are for. The tutorials to help, hopefully, you know, add some bits to people's repertoires. You know, so I want this to work for you as well. So I think we've found what it is we're looking for. And that's why it's always quite nice to have the photograph reference. I just think it works a treat. The gone are days of people feeling embarrassed to show people their pictures. And you don't have to go and get the FHM or the GQ from like the, the table right next to like the 10 guys on the other side. You can just use your phone now, can't you? Yeah, it is different. Yeah. If you look back at a lot of the early 2000 bedhead styles, they, they, they were essentially quite, I'd say, unisex in a sense. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, there, there wasn't any many elements of the barber, but the barber, in, yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of soft edges. It was a lot of like texture, a lot of techniques that barbers may not have actually known about or, or, or used to use every day back then. Yeah. Um, like point cutting, you know, razor work, slide cutting. Most barbers just used to club cut and do everything very uniform and very, you know, classic, mm -hmm. which that was just the way, you know, there, was, there was two sides to the, to the job. It was hairdressing, it was barbering. That was kind of what it was like. So I think a lot of the elements that, was used in these kind of 2000 sort of images where very sort of more hairdressing in a sense, you know. Now, I'm gonna start on the back and sides. Now I've done a horseshoe section here because again, I wanna keep a lot of the length on the top, okay? I just wanna to start to change the, the side, the, the sides in the back of uh, Steph's hair. Now I'm gonna go with finger length on the back and sides, okay? Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a square shape through the sides and I'm gonna tape around the edges, but a freehand clipper over comb. Don't want to just put a number three in and go up and off. I just don't think, I just think we can do a lot more with it, okay? I could do that, but I think for the base of what we're trying to achieve, I think we've got the time. Steph's got the time. Yeah. It's a nice thing to do. I think we, we can change this around a little bit more. So, section, pick it up. My fingers aren't going flat on the head because if they're going flat on the head, they'd follow the shape of the head, which would concave. I don't want to do that. My knuckles are pressing flat against the head. And that's allowing me to angle my fingers out maintain length towards the top and taper in the sides a bit. There we go. So we've got a bit more length here, a bit shorter down the bottom there. And again, knuckles flat, guide, like so. Don't have to worry too much about the bottom. When you get to here, you don't have to worry too much about trying to cut it because at the end of the day, you're gonna use the clippers on that anyway. Knuckles in. So we're maintaining that shape. We are gonna cut this a bit short, so it doesn't matter about these longer bits down the bottom, okay? Knuckles flat to the head. Like so. Keeping the sections nice and neat, nice and uniform. Knuckles against the head, set guide behind. Same again, knuckles, pressing against the head. It's allowing me to angle my fingers straight up. Then we're at the bottom section. So 
How did you come across our videos and stuff? I was probably just like looking at um, haircuts and I think clips of Fight Club, which then gave me the inspiration. Oh wow, nice, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, you guys just... Um, we popped up on the algorithm, yeah, yeah. nice one. So I'm just working around to this side now. Again, sticking to the same principle, keeping my knuckles pressed against the scalp, which allows me to keep my fingers nice and straight and up and off the head, creating that squarer finish. Again, not worrying too much about that on the bottom because I'm going to work with clippers on that. But I'm going to use freehand on that, but as you see, by keeping that little bit of length, it's still lying nice and flat. The crown is here, so we dropped it just below, like I always do on the horseshoes. There we go. Head over slightly for a minute. Yeah. Just tilts the client's head over so you can get a little bit lower down. into that previous section behind as a guide. I'm going to so dry it off. So I'm going to start working with the clippers. I'm going to use the medium speed because I want to try and still keep the hair sitting nice and flat. So, clippers, clipper comb. For anyone asking, this is a Matador 45 comb. This one I use, the reason why I use it is because if you look at the teeth, they're almost the same height, the same width as the clipper head as well. So it's a lot less likely to go under it or over it. And any barber hairdresser watching this out there who's gone under or over the comb knows exactly what I'm talking about. I'm gonna start here. This is the guide that I'm working to. So you can see we've kept the length at the top. And I have the shorter guide here. I'm gonna taper this out into the corner. So like what Steph asked for was like a taper, Gonna still give them that. But what I'm gonna do is I've just put my own little twist on trying to create this shape at the top for them. All right, look it up. There's a guide. And it's getting closer and closer with the spine of the comb to the nape of the neck. Now load the lever to a half. Flip up and off. There we go. It's a nice taper. Give it up. Just getting closer, closer down with the spine of the comb and the teeth facing more forwards as well. And laying the comb flat and working the clipper over it. Short blend on the bottom or taper as we call it. And off and I'm working down just so the, the, the comb presses very very lightly against uh, Steph's head now that'll make it a roughly a number three okay so we're going a bit closer to the neck again that's what was the initial requirement was that he wanted that kind of taper in the neck so using that from what he said but still being allowed to put my own little sort of ideas in there as well so with this comb if you press very very lightly Against the scalp, it will be about a number three, okay? If you press fairly hard, it'll be a number two. As you can see, we're not getting any scalp exposure, but we were at the bottom when we went shorter. I'm gonna move on to my trimmers now. I'm gonna start outlining the hairline. Again, we're not gonna go for that kind of messy outline like we said at the start because 
That wasn't really part of the reference we were looking at. It was more at the top being messy. Come in, flat, and waking up into that length. Again, I want it to kind of blend into the whole vibe that we're going with here. That kind of, there's no point in having a really sort of detailed sideburn and things like that. I think it just takes, it just takes away from the haircut really. But again, that's just my opinion. And again, the thing is, like, I'm, you know, as much as obviously some haircuts do need to be done all the time, like, like skin fades, etc. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just look at it as like me, right? I'm, I'm very, very low maintenance when it comes to my hair. Yeah, yeah. Um, super, super low maintenance. Like, I don't really do much to it. I get a 0.5 back in sides, yeah. and I get it short and textured on top, just enough that I can get a bit of product in it yeah. and style it. And that is literally it, right? I've always been the same. I've, Toyed, toyed it a bit longer and things like that, but essentially it's always been about the low maintenance elements. That's what I've always gone for, right? I always like the haircut to be a, to to not be too much of a contrast. Yeah. I like the haircut to blend in with what we're wearing. I don't want it to be like too stand out, you know. But um, on the top, right? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the front, and I'm going to try and use the fringe as my guide. Okay, that is the guide length I want to go to. And I'm going to get just gradually shorter towards the back. And all that will do, allow me to change the whole shape. It will allow the fringe to be messy. It will basically create the Brad Pitt kind of shape on top. If you look at that picture I showed you, it was very level. Whereas at the minute, it's very round. Okay, so I want to make it level. And by doing that, we use the fringe, the length, because it naturally concaves to the front. So I want to use that as my guide and then get a bit shorter towards the back. But again, I'm not going to take much length off, just the bits that need doing. So that's okay there. That's okay there. And as we get just before the apex, I'm going to start taking a bit off. See, that's where it starts to round off. There's a guide underneath just by taking that a little bit shorter. And as we get closer and closer to the crown, we go a tiny bit shorter. And there's another guide. There we go. Using the guide again. Just point cutting into this. As we get to the crown, I'm just going to pick it up just one section before. There's a guide again. But then I'm going to leave the crown to the very end. Here, I'm going to take quite a bit off now, even on this corner of the fringe as well. And there's a little corner we need to take off. I'm going to point cut into this because I want quite a textured sides. And there's a lot of them to come off that bit of the crown there. What we've done, we've still kept that square shape in there. So as we drive that through, you'll see squareness is in there, but we've connected it in as well. This way, it's a little tiny bit longer. And again, that off. quite a lot of length in there. Take that off. We need it. Not doing any favours for us at the moment for this, this kind of style. This is on the, the round now, just above the round of the head. Take that corner in. There we go. There's the guide I was using before, I was cutting through my fingers, and there's the guide from the top. I'm just gonna... Not all of them coming off now. Can we drop it down to our transition area. There we go, now that fringe is the longest point now. Now before we cut the crown in, I'm gonna start adding a little bit of texture. Now it is quite short, I just wanna break it up a little bit. So I'm gonna start at the roots, I'm gonna work up. Okay, we don't really have a mid length here, it's very, very short. This is going to add a whole load of different type of texture, a bit of collapse, a little bit of root lift, help it stand up a little bit like so, like that. If you think about Brad Pitt's hair and that, it's very, very textured, like it's soup, there's not like one particular sort of style he wears it in. No, no, the fringe no. is kind of up a little bit, but it's just very messy all over, right? And that's the kind of thing I want to create. It's almost looks like it's not even like the same length. Some of the yeah, some bits look all over, don't they really? Yeah, 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 that's it. So I'm just working from the, the root to the tip, like that, even towards the front, because I want the front to sit quite messy as well. Same thing again, scattering it through. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to slide across, like so. I'm going to take sections and bring it like this. Again, nice ways to create that texture, that really messy, heavy texture. Like so. Right, I'm gonna use a little bit of this label. Label Men it is, it's a uh, thickening toy. Now that might sound mad. 
because we're going for like, you've already got thick hair. But what I want to do, I don't want to make it wispy too much. I want that. If you think about Brad Pitt's hairstyle, it's quite clumpy texture. It's not like a wispy texture. You know what I mean? It just looks as though it's real bedhead, right? Yeah. Bedhead isn't wispy. It's clumps moved around, right? Sure, sure. That's what I want to do for this. Spray a little bit in. And then it's will act like my base, okay? Now, high heat on a medium speed, okay? I'm using the hairdryer. I'm going to start at the front. I'm just going to bring it up. Okay, I want to dry this fringe up a little bit, okay? Just so I can see the height that we've got in there. Like so. And then I'm going to dry from left to le right, right to left, left to right, right to left. Whichever way around you want to do it, it's up to you. Doesn't matter. But I'm going to try breaking up the natural growth direction on this now. So I want this to sit really, really natural, really, really messy as well. Now, through the sides, the run, the brush, back, like that. Because I want the sides to have that little bit of texture in there. I want the sides to stand out a little bit. Okay, so we're using that kind of Brad Pitt's kind of fight club vibe again, where it's quite messy, it's quite textured all over. Trying the sides back, they'll force themselves in the direction they want to grow. But what it'll do, it'll create this kind of tuftiness, which is what which is what his hair is like. But trying it against the way it wants to grow will allow me to style it forward, but also back as well. Yeah. And then just finishing off my fingers, just scrunching through, like so. Now, a little bit of cold air, so just turn the heat off. There's a cold air button on here as well, a little, um, little logo for it there, it's like a little icicle. And just dry it off like that, okay? Now, realistically, you could. Before I finish off the crown, you can see the shape we've cut into this, right? And to be honest, you wouldn't really need to put anything else on if you didn't want to. You could just have it like that if you really wanted to. I will finish off with something else, but you could have it just with just a little bit of the, the thickness on it straight in. Yeah. I'm just cutting the crown in. So I'm just bringing this across. Again, I'm cutting it across the way the, the crown grows. Back over the crown towards the back of the head, towards me. I'm just going to cut it just lifting up just a slightly in front of where the crown is, only very slightly. This would be pulling it out on the crown. As you can see, there's a corner. Just pulling it out like that. I'm just going to cut into that a little bit as well. So to finish, I'm going to go with that kind of same drier, bed heady kind of fish. I know Brad Pitt's is quite wettish looking, but I don't know whether that would have the same effect nowadays. I don't know whether it would look well. I think it might make your hair look a little bit greasy. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to use the Label M Matte Paste. All right. Again, it's very dry. It's very pliable. You don't need to use an awful lot neither. So I tend to use like a fingernail amount. So just run my finger up to my fingernail like this in the palm of my hand and then work it through. Okay, so make sure you spread this all around. It goes completely clear as well, okay? So you shouldn't really see it on your hands, okay? Through your fingers, make sure you rub it all in. I always rub it in like I said, I'm using a hand moisturizer. That way you get it all over your hands, all through your fingers. And that way when you apply it through your hair, it coats every bit because it's all over your hands, okay? Now, you're not looking to style this, now you're looking to apply the product. There's a difference in styling to applying, okay? Try and do this, say, if you leave your product in the bathroom, rub this through your hair as you walk into your bedroom, so you're not looking in the mirror, okay? What you do, rub it right through the hair, like a shampoo, all the way through the back and sides as well, okay? I want you to bring out that texture through the sides as well, okay? And then, just style however you want. So, just thinking of maybe the Brad Pitt style, where it's quite messy, quite textured, I'm just gonna make it look really, really heavily textured all over, okay? But going for that, still kind of shape that is the same as what his hair is like as well. I kind of still square, longer at the front, loads of texture in it. So basically when you get up in the morning, you can replicate what the haircut was like yeah, yeah. by doing that. What was his name in, in Fight Club again? What was Tyler? Tyler Durden. Tyler Durden, yeah. That is my sort of take on what we looked at originally, okay? Now I want to show you why I didn't just put a three on the back and sides. I'm going to show you with a mirror. Because we've gone down to probably roughly a three, maybe a little bit longer on the, on the bottom here. But what I've allowed to do on the sides, I've allowed to create that Fight Club-esque shape in the blend, yeah, yeah. where by using my fingers and separating it and cutting it through with my fingers, it still maintains a square shape, but it's just allowed more length to sit through these corners so that you get a textured finish with it still being a nice taper. Yeah, Do you see what I mean? So if you look at the pictures of Fight Club, he's got that messiness through here. Yeah. And it, but then it transcends down to being messy around the ears as well. But I just use that through here 
and then just did what you wanted around the back and sides and just tapered it right out. Yeah, but you see that shape sitting through the back now where it's kind of goes short to long. Yeah, yeah. You'll be able to do that every day. It's super easy because there's enough length, all the shapes cut in. As you can see, I haven't done anything special, I just dried it off, you know? Use the brush to just break up the growth pattern, but you don't have to do that. That was just so you can see the perfect version of what you wanted. Yeah, yeah. Happy with that, mate? Yeah, definitely the best day I've had. Oh, that's very kind, man. Thank you very much. It looks great. It really does. I'm, I, I'm just so glad we didn't just put a number three on it. Yeah, I really no, am. I, I, I definitely agree. You see the difference in the shape now as well. Could yeah. you just pull your mask down for me if you don't mind as well? Like, see the difference in that now? Where it's really angled your jawline in there. You can really see. You can take that off, yeah. See that? By keeping that squareness. And that looks really, really good for your face shape. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Tyler, that's good, <laughs> doesn't it? Are you real? Yeah, you know, this is an imagination, is it, right? Definitely. Uh, I saw a comment on YouTube that uh, said that you were like the Bob Ross of... Uh, <laughs> I, guess, yeah, I know. I, I totally see it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I love Bob Ross as well, you know, I think that's a really nice one to be compared to. Everyone's, and I was waiting for you to say guide as well. Everyone, Who's that? Uh, you need to say guide. Just like, oh, guide, oh, yeah, yeah. Fan base, just been like, <laughs> waiting for Dad to say guide. <laughs> I always thought people were waiting for me to say horseshoe section. I always think that. Oh, okay. that I've, had, I've had a couple of people message me, so I'm just saying, um, could you record horseshoe section for me? I'm like, <laughs> if you want, mate, like, you know, if you want.